Happy Friday! Here we are, day 14 of the little 14-day challenge that I did for myself. Uh, a couple new toys, not necessarily Crokinole related that I've got. One is uh, I just went and picked up a selfie stick because I want it to be able to walk around and show you a couple things before we're done here. And the other thing is that I recently upgraded away from an iPhone. So hopefully all the Apple lovers out there don't, uh, don't get too upset with me for saying that. But my iPhone was causing me a little bit of stress, so... Um, a few days ago I chose to eliminate that but uh, anyway the reason I mentioned that is because I know that Gary who told me about the little trick that gets you to flip your camera around so that things are forward not backward is gonna look at my hat and say hey Jerry, I already told you how to do that why don't you have that flipped around and I just haven't been able to find that setting on this particular phone so you'll have to put up with my bass awkwardness here um, shop update fantastic day um, yeah, really happy with the progress we made this week. Um, we got all of this week's commitments out and put a little bit of dent into next week. So there was some boards that we had told people that would be shipped by next Friday actually went out the door today. So uh, that feels pretty good to, uh, to be just a little bit ahead of schedule. And uh, next week is set up nicely as well. So as far as gratitude, uh, grateful for that, obviously, that uh, things are going well. Um, I'm grateful. I don't know if you can hear it in the background or not. I don't know how much noise comes through on this, but if you can hear a little buzzing, whirling noise in the background, that is because Elaine is spending the evening doing something that she absolutely loves. A few months ago, she picked up a long arm sewing machine, so she is up there working on a couple quilts for a course she's doing. She will be a, a certified APQS long armor, long armor. <clears throat> say that three times real fast. Um, I believe in about three or four months she'll have uh, completed all her assignments and have that in. And the reason I'm grateful for that is because it makes her happy. There's been It doesn't happen often, but she has been known to be grumpy. But I've seen her walk into that room grumpy and come back out a couple hours later uh, very happy. So, um, yeah, when happy wife, happy life, happy spouse, happy house. Um, yeah, the other thing I'm grateful for today I was thinking about is uh, the whole TGI Friday not typically an expression that I use because I've, um, hey, doing Dale. Um, I've, I've never really been one to stay with a job that I didn't like. So people say TGI Friday, thank God it's Friday. You know, they're happy for the weekend. Uh, five days of the week suck. The other two are pretty good. Uh, I've never really felt that way for a couple of reasons. One, because if I don't like a job, I won't stay with it. And two, because I've had so many jobs and, and things that I've done for work over the years that Friday didn't mean much. Like I grew up working on a pig farm, so we would work Christmas Day, and people always thought that was weird. Like, what do you mean, Jeremy, you have to work Christmas Day? And I'm like, well, the funny thing about the pigs is they like to eat on Christmas. They don't care that we're opening presents. So, um, yeah, but lately, Friday has become a very, very, very enjoyable day for us. Not because we don't enjoy what we do, but just because... It is one of our two shipping days. We ship out on Tuesdays and Fridays. And typically, just the way it works out, Friday ends up being a bigger shipping day. So there's just a, a real sense of satisfaction to see the, see the boards go out. And I keep my orders in columns on the wall so I know what dates Elaine has emailed people to say, okay, we're going to have your board out by this date. And to, to empty a column, it just feels good. And this morning, buzz off, fly. Uh, this morning or this afternoon when we were shipping we emptied a, the column for this week and, and like I say put a little bit of a dent into next week's column and it's just yeah Fridays are just really enjoyable and then uh, once we once we were done with all the shipping we actually I don't know if we went out for lunch or brunch or breakfast or what we went for because it was a breakfast type meal but I think it was three o'clock this afternoon that Elaine and I went out after all the shipping stuff was taken care of we uh, we went out for lunch which was kind of nice and yeah, like I say, she's off doing what she loves to do tonight. So it's just a really enjoyable day. Um, quick shop tour. I am not going to do a tour of the entire shop because some of it is a bit of a disaster right now. And after a busy day, it needs a serious cleaning. And I'd like to have it a little better organized before I show you around. But I will uh, just take a quick dart around here, show you a couple things on this, this side of the shop, this half of the shop, and some of the things that go on. A um, couple things I'll show you. Maybe are way more interesting to me than they are to you, but uh, I'll show you what I think is cool and uh, you can decide. Got any questions, feel free to pop them up there. I think with this, with the way this works, I should see the questions pop up. Uh, if I don't, then I'll, or if you're watching this later, throw the question up and I'll answer as best I can. 
Um, yeah, so let's start right here. What was what's usually behind me when I'm doing the videos is I don't know if that light helps or not. Just kind of a my workspace table and what this mostly gets used for. This is where I set up to do my gluing. And I'll show you why I do that here in just a minute. So here is a bottom. That is what some people I'm not sure they realize is that I actually completely build the bottom, completely make the top, and then the two of them go together. So there's a bottom that's ready to go. So I can pop it up here, get the good lighting. I can give it a, a good final inspection, make sure everything's copacetic with it before I, uh, before I put a top on it. And you'll see in the background here is the stack of tops. These, as they, uh, after they've been lacquered, I give them a really thorough inspection, make sure everything is good. Uh, any little blemishes, I've got, uh, I've got sandpaper that goes all the way up to 12,000 grit. It's more like a polishing pad than sandpaper. But if there's any, any little bumps from the lacquering, which happens sometimes, then I'm able to clean those up uh, before they ever get put onto a bottom. So uh, this is where I set up with my lighting and do a really good inspection, get the glue in place. And uh, then the reason I do this here is because on the other side of the room, we have my handy dandy glue press. And what I forgot to mention when I started all this is when I, when I think about my shop or if someone is to look at some of the things in my shop, the expression that I like to use is that I would describe the things that I use in my shop as state of the need, not necessarily state of the art. So I don't know if you're old enough to have watched MacGyver, you might have some MacGyver flashbacks as you look at some of the things. And a lot of the tools that I have would be useless to anyone other than me. Uh, and that's fine because I've, I've, some of these ideas of mine, some are things that I learned from my board building mentor. Uh, some of them I learned from his brother who, uh, who worked with him for the last seven years while he was building. There was two of them pumping out the Willard boards. So um, yeah, anyway, with that in mind, I'll give you a quick look at my glue press. So once I have the top and the bottom put together, then uh, they actually go into this glue press with that has some uh, toggle clamps as well as a vise that I had a local welding shop fix up for me. So it allows me to put really, really even pressure down and lock this thing down. So when these things are uh, when these things are glued, they're they're there to stay. Uh, and I remember very early on somebody who, somebody was asking me a ton of questions about. Um, he knew I'd been trained by Willard and he said like, do you do things exactly like Willard does things? And I said, well, one of the things I do differently is I have a glue press, whereas I know that uh, he liked to use a vacuum bag. And the vacuum bag worked great, um, but I actually learned about this from his brother. And the nice thing about this is I had it made once and for all intents and purposes, it will never wear out. The other great thing about it is it makes almost no noise. Uh, my shop is in my home. I love working from home. It's fantastic and it's also where my family lives so um, using things that are super noisy given that usually I'm up at 5 in the morning I make a coffee I'm down here by 505 510 maybe um, if I want to put a board in the glue press I don't have to worry about the noise of that waking anyone up so it's super convenient that way most importantly it does the job extremely well uh, so yeah maybe not the fanciest thing but it's certainly something that works now, I may have to drop the light down here to, to uh, show you what this is about. Now, this is something super simple, but has made a world of difference for me. And that is, this is where I store, this is where I store the bottoms uh, when they come back from being lacquered and they go in here. This is also where they're stored. Some of these have tops on them already, some of them don't. But what I was finding is the storage space I was having here, I have all my tables high enough that a board will fit on edge underneath because uh, it's just not always good to stack them. What if you want the one on the bottom? So, um, but stand them on edge. Do you have any idea what it feels like when all these boards that you've worked on decide to do a little bit of a domino impression? Yeah, it's not cool when you hear those things going over the side. So I uh, put my thinking cap on and uh, they, there's a cardboard surface on the bottom to, to protect them as so there's nothing, uh, nothing gonna damage them from like concrete floor or anything like that. But the cool part is that under here, I set up a two by four on edge at the perfect height so the board just fits underneath but then I took some of those foam pads like people would get that um, for the kids to play on like those uh, locked together puzzle piece pads and um, they're actually stapled up across there the staples are well up out of the way but now when I take a board and I push it under there 
there's just a little bit of pressure. So I can have this whole section, and I've seen it a few times, this whole section is completely full of boards. Maybe it's just bottoms, maybe they're, they're waiting for pegs, maybe they're complete, but they're under there, they're basically locked in place, they can't fall over. So maybe not exciting to you, but for the guy that cries when they fall over, that is very, very exciting. Um, the other side, like I said, just trying to use the most of my space here, I have um, just junk, basically. Uh, the odds and ends that I don't have a better home for uh, go there. Another thing that's absolutely state of the state of the need, not state of the art, and uh, it might look like something you'd find in a kindergarten work project, but we have uh, 12 different colors of buttons that people can choose from. When you order a board, you get any two colors you want. So here I am when I'm packaging up boards and uh, so I'm looking through and somebody ordered uh, red and black or pink and purple, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I'm getting ready to package that board up. I, I told you in a previous live that rather than counting the buttons out every time, that Elaine and I will sit down on the sofa and have a romantic date night of getting, getting these uh, all bagged up and ready to go. So we have literally thousands of buttons here that are bagged up, but I took cardboard boxes that I had that were almost the right size, modified them a little bit, taped them a little bit, and now I have these drawers that fit in. So I have all 12 colors. So when I'm packaging up a board and the person wants blue and purple, I just grab those and I'm tossing them over there where I do my packaging. So this allows me, I think each one of these holds 50 or 60 bags. And then as they get low, then I just take my, uh, my bigger storage boxes, refill those. And it just, it's just something that say it only saves a few seconds of board, but when you have enough boards going out, those few seconds, it adds up over time. So, um, the other thing I was running out of storage space. So I rounded up some two by four and I just basically made, I made extra storage space. So I have all my shipping boxes, the cardboard that I use for packaging is just up and out of the way and uh, can actually put quite a bit up there. The other thing that's really good for, just like I don't want my bottoms to fall over, I really, really, really don't want my tops to, <laughs> one more really in case you missed that, um, I really don't want my tops to fall over. So I actually have um, an adjustable curtain rod that I wedge in here that basically keeps those tops from being able to go anywhere. So if they did happen to slide, then there's something that's gonna keep them from falling over. So yeah, simple, but it works and it keeps, uh, keeps, keeps my stuff safe and less loss means just better business. So um, you'll see here, Elaine's hard work from earlier this week is she went, uh, I guess from here up is stained, uh, they're red. That's a stack of the reds. That's the first thing that happens is the gutter gets stained before the rail ever goes on. Um, I don't have the patience or <laughs> the meticulousness to paint a gutter after the rail is on. So yeah, the, that gets stained uh, before the rail ever goes on. Um, so yeah, Elaine, that's one of the things Elaine's been doing for me is looking after that. So she did a whole bunch of red, she did a whole bunch of black the other day, and she actually did a couple of custom boards we're working on people that wanted just a very specific color in the gutter. So we go out and get that specific stain to, for them. And she was always like, phew, I don't have to worry about that for a while. And then what did I do being the caring husband that I am? Um, I came home the other day with another 78 bottoms that are yet to be stained. So she was down here this morning helping me package and she looked and she's like, crap, there's more to do. I thought I was done staining for a while. So um, yeah, anyway, so lots of staining and that's just the beginning. Like that's just the red over here. I have some more storage. I've got the, the, the a, couple of, a couple of stacks of black over there because we actually, Probably sell, probably see orders for two or three black for every one red. Um, some people ask us about the standard board and the tour board. I'm going to do another live explaining the differences between them, but uh, we're probably seeing about 10 tour boards for every one standard board. Uh, I think people are just really drawn to that nice vibrant red and black in the ditch, and that seems to be more popular. The people that do seem drawn toward the standard boards, and this is just my opinion, I haven't done any big surveys or studies or anything, but it seems as though it's people that grew up with crokinole, so they have that deep-rooted memory of playing with grandma and grandpa or, or you know, uh, uh, family gatherings, and that's what they remember. They remember that plain gut or more, the plain look that is the standard board. So if it's, uh, if it's a childhood memory for them, then they're more inclined to lean toward getting the standard board. But uh, again, in case there wasn't enough storage already, down here we have even more storage. It's just... Uh, 
stuff that I need out of my way. And the furthest over, what you see is um, that's where I put boards that I have banded, but that are ready for sanding. So it's just it's just where they fit in the flow. My, the main uh, the shop where I'm doing more of the more of the banding and the drill press and whatnot is over there for putting the pegs in. Uh, it starts there, comes here, and then there's actually uh, another spot where I do the sanding to keep the, the heavy dust out of the house. And um, anyway, and then here, you've heard me talk different times about banding. That is my current supply of banding, which you probably can't really get a good look at from there. But uh, yeah, that's about uh, 10 or 15 sheets, plywood sheets, where the banding cut into the strips that I need. So. Um, over here, I'm not going to show you just because there's personal information on the wall, but that's where I keep the that's where I keep the orders. So as I'm as I'm coming past, or somebody emails me with a question about an order, I'm able to come and see that. Elaine has her own list that she keeps track of as well, because um, with as much, it's interesting when the, when the business takes off as much as it did here uh, at the end of June, like things were going really well, but then all of a sudden it just it just really took off. Um, if there's gaps in your system, if there's gaps in the way you're doing things, it, when there's that much volume comes through, they get highlighted pretty quick. So it's just, uh, we have systems in place to make sure, because it would just feel awful if somebody ordered a board and we forgot and like, like a couple months later they come looking for it and we just, like that would just feel awful. So we have systems in place now to make sure that doesn't happen. It's, it's not impossible, we're still human, but, um, but yeah, we have some systems in place. So that's where I keep the orders. And that way, when they, when the board is ready to package, then I've I've got the the printed off order right there, and I go, okay, this person, yeah, this person wants a black carry bag, and they've got uh, they want extra buttons or whatever it is, so I'm able to grab that and make sure that it gets in with their board, and uh, they get everything that they want. So, um, I think that's it. That's it for this part of the shop. When I get things cleaned up and organized over there. On another day, and I could have waited to I could have waited to do this until I did the whole thing, had the whole thing ready to show you. But um, yeah, I just decided to go for it tonight, and this has already been way longer than I thought it would be. So it looks like there's still a few people watching. So hopefully somebody found it interesting. I've actually got my phone sideways here, as you can see. I'm gonna flip it because maybe if there were any questions, oh, rotate your device. You can't turn your phone while live. Wow. I just learned something. You can't turn your phone like that while you're doing a live. So if there are any questions, I will see them later. Um, today was the day 14 of our 14 day challenge of shop updates and gratitude. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do after this, but I've really been enjoying this and really been enjoying the connecting and interacting with people. So I'll be keeping up with something. Uh, it may not be daily, but I really do really have enjoyed it. And, um, the pressure of saying that I was going to do it every day, pretty much the only reason, like today kind of got away from me. I'm like, oh crap. Um, I said I would do this live, so I better get it done. But um, anyway, thanks for tagging along. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'd love to hear what you're grateful for. I'd love to hear any questions that you have. And um, oh yeah, I'll throw another gratitude here on the end. I am grateful that this afternoon I had a few minutes to grab a phone chat with Chris from Belleville. He's one of the organizers of the upcoming NCA tournament. 14 days from now on uh, September 21st, there, there's still room. There's uh, They've got a good registration going already, but there's still room. Uh, so yeah, good news from last night that I'm grateful for, and then uh, more good news today. Uh, yesterday I learned that two guys, Jason and Nick, will be traveling up here from the U.S. I, did a quick map search and it looks like one of them is driving five hours and the other one's driving eight hours just to take in this tournament and it's going to be so good to see them and yeah on top of that getting to have a chat with Chris today has me even more excited about that tournament than I already was. Um, Dale Henry who's been watching here I think and hope he's going because I haven't seen him since the since the Turtle Island tournament and it's always good to see Dale. Um, yeah so lots to be grateful for TGI Friday not because I won't be working tomorrow I definitely will be and uh yeah make it a great night make it a great weekend and we will see you in the future